Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Health and Wellness Sport. This is Dr. Lewis. Now, fasting and cancer. Basically, what is the role of fasting in curing or in healing of cancer? So, fasting is very important in uh, basically a normal daily living. So, normal people and also patients who have cancer. Fasting is very important because now you remember, uh, we are not the ones who initiated fasting. Fasting is something that has been there all through only that uh, our cravings for food have made us become food addicts and therefore it becomes hard uh, to fast. But fasting is very necessary for your normal daily routine. It's also a lifestyle and it's helpful in people who have tumors and people who have spreading cancer. It reduces spreading. Remember, cancer spread faster through inflamed tissues and that tells you how fasting is important because fasting, specifically prolonged fasting, uh, cures inflammation and once you clear you cure inflammation then cancer cannot spread as fast as it could or as it as it would have loved to so you'll start uh, avoiding the spread of cancer and also you start recovering from it because fasting also denies cancer chance to have the energy sources that cancer cells want or like to use so first of all let's start from uh, the reason why we fast we fast because we want to get into ketosis so a 72-hour fast or a 48-hour fast is important for you to get ketosis. Ketosis is basically the breakdown of fat to give you ketone bodies, which are the best energy sources of the body. Now, the body appreciates ketone bodies. That is something that most of you don't know. Most of you have been made to believe that the body appreciates glucose. However, the reason why the body takes glucose as its only source of energy is because you have exposed your body to so much carbohydrates that it has no option. So if you continue eating carbohydrates all the time, then your body has no option to have to use the energy mechanisms that are available. Okay, and the machinery that is available at that moment in time is basically glucose. So the body will utilize the glucose and it will discard any other form of uh, energy. Now, when you continue eating uh, these carbohydrates, you turn them into fat. That fat is stored in fat cells and that is where we can source our ketone bodies. When you stop eating carbohydrates, then the body naturally shifts its energy mechanisms from breaking down glucose to give you ATP to breaking down the fat to give you ketone bodies. And ketone bodies are the best energy sources of your, for your body, your cells, and your brain. Now remember, there are several effects that sugar, which is glucose, causes to your body cells. One, it destroys cells completely, so the cells do not like glucose. That is a myth. Cells do not like glucose. So the myth that glucose is the most important source of energy for the cells should be unlearned. So cells do not like glucose for a reason. Number one, glucose kills blood vessels. So glucose, basically, it causes a disease called peripheral vascular disease. This means it causes inflammation of blood vessels. And that is a problem to people who have heart conditions. And also, people who don't have heart conditions, this can lead to heart conditions. So inflammation of blood vessels as a result of, basically, accumulation of bad cholesterol, which is small, dense, low-density lipoprotein. This is the harmful cholesterol that comes from carbohydrates intake. So excess carbohydrates are broken down to glucose, and this glucose, excess of it is converted to glycogen. The remaining is converted to fat, and that fat is the reason why you get small, dense, low-density lipoprotein, which causes atherosclerosis, basically hardening of blood vessels and also occlusion of these blood vessels. So people who continue eating carbohydrates have a risk of heart attacks. So that is basically what I explained here. And these are basically the effects of sugar on blood, on, on, on different organs. Then again, sugar kills brains and nerve cells. That's the reason why when you keep, you keep on eating sugar, you get those mental fogging, you cannot concentrate easily. And one of the reasons why we fast is because uh, we want mental clarity. And people will tell you, the more they fast, the more clearer their memory is, the more uh, clearer their mental prowess uh, becomes. So start fasting because that denies your body uh, utilizing of glucose and glucose kills the brain and nerve cells. This is the reason why diabetics have all those numbness and they lose memory all the time because of glucose. Again, sugar kills the kidneys because sugar is number one on the list of substances that kill the kidneys. And once you kill the kidney, that means toxins in your system will accumulate and you'll end up in toxicosis. So you'll have all those toxins in your body. you rare. Uh, they'll build up in your system and you'll start the potassium, sodium. And that's the reason why people blame salt for what sugar causes. So sugar kills the kidneys and then people say when you take salt, you'll end up in hypertension. Salt does not cause hypertension. Salt will only augment hypertension if at all your kidneys are messed up. And what messes the kidneys is sugar. So drop sugar and enjoy your salt. 
Then if you kill the kidneys, that means you are killing the hormone erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is the hormone that is responsible for production of red blood cells. Okay, so you'll get into anemia. Again, hypertension because the kidney is the one that controls blood pressure. So if you have a messed up kidney because of sugar, then you'll end up having hypertension. And this hypertension is the one that you cannot control. Uh, you'll, you'll be told not to eat salt. Okay, so if you have a kidney problem, you will be limited on eating salt. So what you do, you fix the kidneys through fixing sugar, and then you can enjoy your salt. Then also eye. People who have diabetes will tell you they go blind. And the reason is sugar kills the optic nerve, and therefore you cannot see. You'll become blind. So you've exposed yourself to so many carbohydrates, and it's even worse because pregnant women are even uh, joining the group again. So nowadays it's so uh, uh, prominent that pregnant women are having this diabetes in pregnancy, the gestational diabetes and hypertension. And all this can be prevented by just dropping sugar in your diet and simple carbohydrates. So pregnant women who are still eating processed foods, you're doing yourself an injustice. You might have more complications in pregnancy than you, you'll ever think. So sugar is a very dangerous toxic uh, product to your cells. So these are the effects of sugar on different organs in your system. Now, having known this, <coughs> so why, why do we still take carbohydrates and simple carbohydrates for that matter? Why do we still consume them when we know that these things are evident and we know them from either our relatives, uh, even uh, from, from classwork, and even from research. So why do we still take sugar when we know all this will come at the end of the day? Please avoid sugar by all means. So when you, there's a difference between ketosis, before I just move on, ketosis and ketoacidosis. Now ketoacidosis is because of DM type 1. So, diabetes type 1, basically, you have an autoimmune condition. And what causes autoimmune conditions? Sugar again. So, diabetes type 1 is an autoimmune condition where you do not produce insulin, enough insulin, or you don't, uh, your, your beta cells in the pancreas are failing, so they cannot produce insulin. And therefore, sugar and ketone bodies in your system are accumulating uh, uncontrollably. So, you get into ketoacidosis. That is different from ketosis. Ketosis is basically, you have denied your body glucose, and therefore, the body shifts to the fat in your system to start breaking it down to give you ketone bodies which are the best energy sources of the body okay and these you see these ketone bodies when they are in excess in your system and they're not, they're not utilized as energy they will live through the kidneys through urine so they go through urine and you can imagine if you're already consuming sugar and your kidneys are messed up then these ketones start building up excessively and that's what, what takes you to ketoacidosis okay so sugar is not important in any of this so when you fast you're breaking down fats to give you ketones. Now, cancer cells survive on two. I'll keep insisting. Cancer cells survive on two energy sources. Number one has to be glucose, and number two has to be glutamine. Those are the only energy sources that cancer cells survive on. Now, we said glutamine, you cannot control it because it's basically in every form of foods, be it vegetables, be it eggs, be it meat, it is there. So it is hard to avoid this glutamine. However, glucose comes from carbohydrates consumption. So if you limit carbohydrates consumption, then you break, break down this chain. And then cancer cells start to suffer. So they start dying. And that's where, how people start recovering from tumors and cancer. Because you've killed the energy sources for cancer cells, and then your bodies are surviving on ketones. Remember, your body cells have two sources of energy, ketones and also glucose. This glucose can come from protein, can come from animal fat, but mostly it comes from carbohydrates intake again. Okay, so once you break it down to get glucose, break carbohydrates down to get glucose, then your cancer is surviving. So what, we, what are you doing? We, are, we want to get the common factor here, which is glucose, and block, block it out. So if you block glucose in your diet totally, then your body shifts to fat. So this is fat. So your body shifts to fat to give you ketone bodies. And these are the best energy sources. So they will kill cancer cells because cancer cells does not know how to, does not know how to handle ketones. So it will start dying. Okay, and that's the reason why fasting is very important in cancer patients. That is number one. Number two, when you fast, you go into a process called autophagy. Autophagy is basically uh, after 48 hours of fasting. Basically, it starts at 36 hours. So autophagy basically means you are now starting to uh, break organelles in the cell. So the cell has these organelles that are dead, the tissue debris in the cells that are dead. So the, 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 the cells turn to these organelles inside the cell and start changing them or converting them into energy. And that's a form of cell cleansing. So you're cleaning up the cell. This means your mitochondria will be, cleansed, will be cleaned too. And remember, cancer hails from the mitochondria. Okay? So if you clean out your, all those organized dirty cells, dirty organelles that are in the cell, and all these bad uh, debris that are in the cell, then your cells rejuvenate. 
that means you have new brain cells, that means you have new uh, body cells, and even new sex cells. And that makes it even easier for your survival against cancer. So autophagy is the reason why we fast to get uh, our cells cleansed out of those toxins and all this. And then we get to the growth hormone. We want to develop, we fast because we want to get the growth hormone that will encourage our systems to break down fat to give you ketosis. Because growth hormone is the hormone that is responsible for uh, fat burnings, encourages fat burning and not fat storage like insulin. So again, we want to lower your insulin to the lowest form possible, control it so that we don't get into insulin resistance that will lead us into cancer. Okay, so once you lower your insulin hormone in the system, your growth hormone starts to shoot. And once it starts to skyrocket, then you start breaking down fat to get ketone bodies that will kill cancer cells. Also, we already said that fasting will help you cure inflammation and therefore cancer cannot spread. So now, we can derive our cancer therapy from just diets. Okay, we will not uh, have to end up in those drugs. And remember, cancer patients, most of them die because of the side effects of cancer drugs. Remember, we have a video that talked about side effects of cancer drugs. Chemotherapy is highly toxic. Okay, radiation exposes patients to more cancer than it helps. Okay, so if you focus on dietary modifications, if you eat healthy, then you avoid cancer or you start killing the cancer cells that are available. Remember, uh, in our system, we have already the oncogenes. These are genes that are actively involved in uh, uh, developing cancer. So we have them, we cannot avoid them. But we can avoid the substances that cause uh, the, the proliferation of these cancer cells through those oncogenes. So that is basically avoid seed oils, avoid sugar, avoid wheat products, avoid processed foods, and concentrate on high animal fat, eat protein diet, organ meat. Basically, that is enough to help you survive from cancer or even to prevent you from getting cancer. So that is the reason why we fast. And that's the reason why cancer patients should start fasting.